The Effect of Water Salinity on Plant Survival Introduction The purpose of doing this research is to find out the effect of water salinity on plant survival as it relates to the rising levels of salt in our national bodies of water and how the plants in those waters will respond to the changes. The effect of salinity on plant survival is an important environmental issue that impacts people everywhere. Salinity reduces the ability of plants to take up water, which can lead to the reduction in growth and survival rate of the plant. This destruction and imbalance could have detrimental impact on plant and animal life, agriculture, and ecosystems. Salinity causes ionic stress, changes in water and nutrient absorption, cell division and expansion, growth inhibition, and possible plant destruction. Rising saltwater lines introduce a greater amount of saltwater into an otherwise freshwater body, and this could potentially harm plant life. This experiment is relevant because this threat would be better identified sooner rather than later so that there's time to regulate, accommodate, and find alternative plant life that will fuel aquatic environments. If the sea level rises and the saltwater line increases with it, it's valuable for us to know which plants will survive and at what point the increased levels of salinity will start to kill the plant. Experimental Design My research question was how will changes in water salinity affect aquatic plant survival? And my hypothesis going into the experiment was if water salinity is increased, then the plants will not survive. My variables were water salinity and plant survival, and the expected outcome was that the higher the salinity of the water, the more plants will have withered. Salt levels in our national bodies of water are rising, and this experiment shows how the aquatic plants of those waters, fresh bodies of water in particular, will respond to said changes. Procedure so first, I took 12 quart-sized mason jars and divided them into four groups of three. Then I labeled the mason jars with identifiers based on experimental group. I then added 600 milliliters of water collected from the Little Creek Reservoir to the jars in group A. Then I poured the group A water that has 0% salinity into the instant ocean hydrometer and recorded the parts per thousand. I added 500 milliliters of water collected from the reservoir to groups B, C, and D. And then I got to creating the 1% salinity mixture. So to do that, I first boiled 100 milliliters of water from the reservoir in an electric kettle. Then I poured that into a 250 milliliter measuring cup and set it aside. Then I poured 6 grams of salt into a clear solo cup. I weighed the 6 grams of salt on the gram scale to confirm. And I added the 6 grams of salt to 100 milliliters of heated water that was set aside in step 6. Then I repeated steps five through nine two more times, and in 24 hours, I added those three mixtures to the jars in group B. I then poured the group B water that has 1% salinity into the instant ocean hydrometer and recorded the parts per thousand. Then I created the 2% salinity mixture. So to do that, I boiled 100 milliliters of Little Creek Reservoir water in an electric kettle. I poured that into a 250 milliliter measuring cup and set it aside. Then I poured 12 grams of salt into a clear solo cup. I weighed the 12 grams of salt on the gram scale to confirm, and I added the 12 grams of salt to the 100 milliliters of heated water that was set aside in step 12. Then I repeated steps 11 through 15 two more times, and in 24 hours I added those three mixtures to the jars in group C. Then I poured the group C water with 2% salinity into the instant ocean hydrometer and recorded the parts per thousand. Next, I created the 3% salinity mixture, so I boiled 100 milliliters of the reservoir water in an electric kettle. I poured that into a 250 milliliter measuring cup and set it aside. I poured 18 grams this time of salt into a clear solo cup, and I weighed the 18 grams of salt on the gram scale to confirm, then I added the 18 grams of salt to the 100 milliliters of heated water that was set aside in step 18. I repeated steps 18 through 22 two more times, and in 24 hours I added those three mixtures to the jars in group D. Then the group D water with 3% salinity went into the instant ocean hydrometer and I recorded the parts per thousand. Then I added 100 milliliters of 1% salinity mixture to the jars in group B, I added 100 milliliters of 2% salinity mixture to the jars in group C, and I added 100 milliliters of 3% salinity mixture to the jars in group D. Then with tweezers, I counted and removed 25 duckweed plants from the collection bucket, I measured the length of the root system of each plant with a centimeter ruler, and I placed 25 plants into each mason jar. 
I then recorded the physical description of the plants at noon every day and observed health changes in the plants over the two week period. Risk and safety. The duckweed in the water used in the experiment were collected in the biological field, namely Little Creek Reservoir. As I was collecting those things, I made sure to have company with me, to be mindful of my footing, and to watch out for steep drops towards the water. One way of collecting those things is by getting in a small boat, in which case general water safety rules apply and it's very important to wear a life jacket. When working at the edge of a body of water or in the field in general, it's important to be aware of weather conditions, watching one step, moving carefully, and just generally being mindful of your surroundings. Results. In the procedure, I wrote that each plant would be placed into mason jars and each jar would receive 25 plants. I also wrote that the physical description of the plants was to be recorded at noon on all 14 days of the experiment. Attempting to measure the roots proved more difficult than expected because the plant material was very delicate. And when I was handling the plants with tweezers, they often broke apart. The average length of the root of each plant prior to being placed in the jar was 1 centimeter, the number of plants per jar was 25, and each plant seemed to be in good health. Group A experienced 16 to 20 percent of duckweed turning brown, but overall kept their green color and body structure. The roots grew to 5 centimeters in length. Group B had an average of 23 percent that did not survive. The leaves turned brown and then white in color. Group C had an average of 34 percent that did not survive and group D had the most duckweed that did not survive, which was 48%. The plants all seemed to grow in terms of root size. Discussion. As expected, the higher the water salinity, the more plants died off, and this affirms that the increasing salinities in our water is an issue. Sea levels are rising, and with that, so are the salt levels. This would be dangerous for freshwater aquatic life, as shown in the experiment. One thing to note is that the type of aquatic plant I used was duckweed, and perhaps duckweed has adapted to the fluctuation of salinity as the water table rises. The experiment was also limited to 25 plants per jar, and it would have been more reliable with a larger sample size over a longer period of time. However, collecting the duckweed for the experiment took longer than expected, as the plants themselves were smaller than expected. Additionally, it is not known what the outcome would have been with a different plant. Weighing the plant before and after may have also benefited the experiment, though without having access to a lab, this wasn't achievable. Conclusion My hypothesis, if water salinity is increased, then the plants will not survive, was supported in this experiment. The hypothesis is supported in regard to the percentage of plants that died after a 14-day period. However, all surviving plants continued to grow. This information serves as an answer to the question, how will changes in water salinity affect aquatic plant survival? An issue with the experiment is the limited time and lack of scientific equipment. The documentation next time would also include more qualitative data to correspond to each day of the experiment. And I did find it difficult to virtually format a chart for recording data, so perhaps next time I would record the data in a notebook. The hydrometer also took many attempts, and each measure may not have been exact. Acknowledgements. Thank you to David Gussman for sharing his backyard, specifically the reservoir that feeds into it, as this is where the water and duckweed for the experiment were acquired. Thank you.